Let's take a look at the outputs for the Mach 3 USB controller that we sell at buildyourcnc.com. The controller is connected to a 24 volt power supply. On the power supply, the mains 110 AC is plugged into this section of the power supply. And the 24 volt DC output is connected at this location, the black wire connected to the V minus or ground, and the red wire connecting to the V plus. The red and black wires are connected to the controller. The red wire connected to the 24 volt terminal and the black wire is connected to the DCM terminal. What I'd like to do in this video is to show the activation of the outputs. I will demonstrate this with a multimeter to confirm that the outputs are being activated and show a change in the voltage at the outputs when activated. Then I'll be connecting the outputs to this relay to demonstrate how other devices like a spindle can be controlled using the Mach 3 USB controller. Right now, I only have the controller plugged into the 24 volt DC power supply. And what I would like to do now is plug the controller into the computer via this USB connector. Once plugged in, you will notice a red LED lights up and blinks slowly. Now let's start Mach 3. Press reset to allow the controller to function and press the arrow keys to confirm that there is communication with Mach 3 and the controller. When I press the arrow keys, the LED should blink quickly, showing that there is communication happening. For instance, moving the machine in different directions. So now let's look at the configuration. Under the config menu, select ports and pins and press the spindle setup tab. Make sure that the disable spindle relays checkbox is unchecked. I'm going to set the clockwise M3 to output number 1, which is the OUT1 terminal on the controller. And I changed the clockwise M4 output to 2, which is OUT2 on the controller. To disengage the output or turn them off, you'll use the M5 code, which I will discuss later. Press OK to save the changes and press reset to allow the controller to function. I'll be using a multimeter on the controller outputs to demonstrate the state of the outputs when the M3, M4, and M5 codes are used. When I go to the MDI tab, I can type in M3 in the input section, which would make the output number 1 activated. To disengage the output, I'll use the M5 code. Turn on the multimeter and set it to DC voltage. Make sure the 24 volt power supply is turned on or plugged in. The negative lead or the black lead is connected to the output terminal number one. And the positive lead, the red lead, to the 24 volt terminal, 24V. Notice that the meter shows near zero volts. When I enter M3 into the MDI input, the meter shows 23.59 volts, which is about 24 volts. When I press M5, it should go back to near zero volts. Now let's go to output number two. I'll type M4 in the input and it should show 24 volts. And when I type in M5, it will go back to near zero volts. Right now I have the motor outputs, the spindle set to output number three. So I will skip that output for now and discuss that in a later time. But I want to test output number four. Since I changed the output to number 4, output number 1 should not work, so let's confirm this. And correctly, the output did not jump to 24 volts, as expected, and configured. Now type M5 to disengage. Now let's actually test the output number 4. Since M5 was invoked, no voltage is present at the output number 4 currently. Now type in M3, and the meter shows 24 volts. So the test and configuration is successful. Now let's turn the output off using M5. So I'm able to manipulate the outputs and demonstrate them working correctly. Let's go ahead and connect the relay to the controller. Now I will connect the relay to the outputs to demonstrate the relay function when connected to the controller. Before the relay is wired, I will disconnect the 24 volt power 
and disconnect the controller from the computer. Okay, the supply is unplugged and let's unplug the USB cable. This board has two relays. Each work as normally open or normally closed. These are the output terminals for each relay. There is a common terminal in the middle of each set of output terminals, which is always connected. If the relay is used as normally open mode, when the relay engages, it closes the circuit, which is the typical scenario. If the normally closed terminal is used, the link between the common and normally closed will open or become disconnected. At the input side, there is a DC plus for the positive 24 volts, a DC minus for the 24 volt ground wire, an in one for the input for the first relay and an in two for the input to the second relay. Since we used the black lead on the multimeter and we showed a positive value on the multimeter, we will set these two jumpers to the L or the low setting. Now let's connect the relay to the controller. I could wire the relay power to the controller, but I would rather connect the DC plus and DC minus to the power supply as there, there's more room on the terminals of the power supply. I'll connect the DC plus to the V plus on the 24 volt power supply and the black wire will be connected between the DC minus and the V minus on the 24 volt power supply. The red wire from the V plus will go to the DC plus on the relay and the black wire from the V minus will go to the DC minus on the relay. Now I will have power to the relay board. I'll only connect one output first to demonstrate one output working. I'll use a white wire to connect the IN1 terminal to the OUT1 terminal on the controller. Now we can test if it works. Plug in the controller to the computer using the USB cable. Now I need to plug in the 24 volt power supply. I also need to change this in the configuration since I was using output number four before while we're testing it with the multimeter. Let's try turning on the first relay. The first relay turning on is verified by the red LED. The relay also made a click sound. If I type M5, you will see that the red LED will turn off. Let's put the IN2 from the relay to the output number two on the controller. Make sure to unplug the supply and the USB cable before changing any wires. I'll use a blue wire for this second relay. Connect the blue wire to the output number two and the other end to the IN1 terminal. Let's plug everything in again and see if it works. I will type M3 to make sure that the output number one is still working, and then type M4 to test the other relay. You'll notice that Mach 3 automatically turns off M3 when M4 is invoked. This is to ensure that the spindle does not have forward and reverse activated at the same time. Go ahead and play with the various combinations of M3 and M4 to turn the relays on and M5 to turn them off. The relay output connections can now be connected to the variable frequency drive signal terminals to control the forward and reverse operation of the spindle. This is how to configure the Mach 3 USB outputs and connect the outputs to a relay. Thank you for watching.